Hello, I'm Tomlin Perkins Coggeshall, grandson of Francis Perkins, who worshipped in the summer here at St. Andrew's Church in Newcastle for many years. Her daughter, Susanna Wilson Coggeshall, was my mother. Frances Perkins was made a holy woman by the Episcopal Church in 2009, with her feast day falling on May 13th. This icon was a generous gift on May, May 14th, 2014, to St. Andrew's Church from the Reverend Amelia Hagen, who is with us now, and who will also share her thoughts on the icon. As you may or may not be able to see, the school words around the edge of the icon are, Social justice is part of the implication of loving thy neighbor. The Reverend Charles Hoffaker, a member of the Francis Perkins Center Board of Directors, commented that it's great to see an inspiring icon of this 20th century saint. He goes on to say her apparel in the icon recalls what she characteristically wore, including her famous hat. The scroll features words with which she described her mission as United States Labor Secretary and as a Christian called to public service at a time of national crisis. Saints are reminders to us, to us of how the reign of God is manifest in many times and places. A saint from our society who lived not so long ago is a challenge for us to realize God's mercy is among us now and we are to live in accord with that mercy. Why was she made a holy woman? As Secretary of Labor in the FDR administration, my grandmother, Frances Perkins, was a chief architect of Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal, which helped the United States and its citizens get through the devastating Great Depression, which started with the stock market crash of 1929 and ended in 1939. I think her, wor her work to help so many through programs like Social Security and unemployment insurance, workers' compensation, and the minimum wage that she launched, helped and administered, may have been part of the reason she was made a holy woman. But she also had a strong Episcopal faith that she shared with FDR. They were both motivated by and guided by their faith, I believe. When FDR died in 1945, she was reflecting on her career and wrote to Justice Felix Frankfurter, her friend, as she was leaving, leaving office. She said, she said, I came to Washington to work for God, FDR, and the millions of plain, forgotten, common working men and women, as it's written on the scroll in the icon. I remember my grandmother as a warm and humorous person who doted on me and loved to show me interesting things. I was only 11 when she died, so I didn't have a chance to know her as an adult, but much of her substance, or at least my memory of it, remains intact in my mind. I still look up to her and think of hers as an exemplary life.